Welcome to The Daily with me, Neil Patterson. And look, let's just get this out the way. I am Scottish. And so, given how much my English friends have banged on about winning the World Cup back in 1966, the idea England might just be about to win it again fills me with a cold dread. Or at least I thought it would, and for some reason, it actually doesn't. There's something very special about this group of women who could soon lift the greatest prize in football. They play with passion, yes, they're a team on and off the pitch, sure. But there's been something transformative about their success. They are changing the way the game is viewed. And behind that success is their manager, Serena Viedman. We all have a dream, and of course we go there uh, to get the highest level we can and to, to get as far as possible. A player herself, then coach, then manager, she led her home nation, the Netherlands, to victory at the Euros and then to a World Cup final. Now in charge of England, she's again won the Euros and is facing off against Spain for the World Cup. But who is Serena Wiegmann? Where does this talent come from? And can I get through this podcast without having to sing It's Coming Home? Let's find out. Well, who better to talk to us about Serena Wiegmann than her former club and Netherlands teammate, Jeanette von der Laan. Well, she reads the game. She knows what the opponent uh, will do. And uh, she knows what's necessary to score a goal. But in, in, in getting the best out of the, the team that she was captaining, uh, how did she do that? Because, you know, we have, we have various different styles when it comes to football. The Alex Ferguson kind of hair dry treatment, you know, shouting, shouting, shouting to, to get the job done. And there are those that, 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 that take the players with them. Where did she fall? on that particular spectrum? Uh, well, maybe in between. But at first, she was uh, the player and she's uh, really spicy. Yeah, we all know uh, that because she's a, a real uh, winner. But after the game, she often calls uh, to me or I sat with her on the bus and we uh, talked through the game. Why did you do that? Did you see another solution? Because on the pitch, you don't always often see the, the solution you, you actually wanted to give. Serena talked me through the solutions after the games. So she's on the field spicy, as you may expect of, her, uh, of a captain. But off the field, she tried to explain the game and try to see you in other solutions. Always with just one goal, scoring goals and getting us the championship. Was it all about the winning then for her? Well, it started with pleasure. It's her passion. It's my passion, and she made her job out of her passion. It starts with passion and pleasure, but uh, for her and uh, for me, it's a combination because winning is also uh, part of uh, our passion. Just watching the way in which she's interacted with the England players you know, at the World Cup, there is a genuine joy, it feels to me, that she has been taking, not just in the success on the pitch, but in the team that, that, that she has assembled. I mean, would you agree with that? I agree with you, that, yes. Uh, you see the sparkle uh, at the players, and I also noticed that with the Dutch national squad when she was uh, our uh, coach and brought us uh, the success. Uh, you have to have a sparkle, because otherwise, why would you train so hard? Why would you do all the effort uh, on winning if you don't like it? I wonder, because a, a few of the England players have commented on this, that off the pitch there is a genuine warmth to her and you can sit down and talk about your private life and, and things like that but when you step over that white line onto the pitch you want to be doing your best for her because if you don't you're probably going to hear about it yes of course she's a uh, Dutch isn't she so she, she's <laughs> an open and transparent uh, person and she she expects something she expects the best all the time but I think that it goes well together. She's a very uh, warm person. She knows the, the private situation of her uh, players. She's just very interested. But those are two different things. When you have to do your job, when you have to get on the pitch, well, you better do it right because she is brave enough to uh, make some tough uh, decisions. I don't think Serena minds people making mistakes. She just wants you to try to do it better. What will she be thinking right now, ahead of presumably one of, if not the biggest games in her life? How will she be dealing with the pressure and how will she be dealing with the players, do you think? 
Well, I guess she's thinking we're going to win this. <laughs> yeah. That's what she's uh, thinking. But she's always very focused. So don't let anyone get on your skin. Eh? She just wants to have the, the, uh, the peace to uh, prepare for, for the match. She will give her players as much confidence as she can. But this is the moment. This is what they all have been training for. Uh, and I think she's able to uh, bring over that feeling. It's our time. We're going to win. We're going to do this. How does she impart that, that level of confidence, which all of us have seen in the Lionesses, but also on top of that, that, that sense of camaraderie that I think is also very evident on the pitch? Yes, yeah, she created a team. I think that's one of her uh, strengths because you can't do it by yourself. I think every player uh, realizes uh, that we need each other and we're all going to stand up for each other. And all you can do is uh, be aware of your opponents. So she will prepare the England squad of, of Spain because Spain is a very, very good team. And she will talk players through their tactical play because they have Hermoso, uh, Redondo, or Aymane, very, very big players. Uh, very good players, and I think that's the way how she will prepare uh, England. So watching the opponent and just just relax. We have to do this. Where would you rank her in terms of managers, coaches that the game has seen? And I'm not restricting this to, to, to women here. I mean, pretty clearly, she has a footballing brain like very, very few people on this planet. Oh, uh, well, that's a difficult question. Uh, question because uh, Serena Wigman was the GOAT. I think she is nowadays the greatest of all uh, times and she is a very big uh, example for, as well for, for men or women. So I do not really want to compare her uh, with someone else. She is outstanding. I think nowadays uh, she is uh, far beyond all the other coaches. From, from what you've been telling us, pretty clearly Serena believes that she's going to win the World Cup this weekend. Do you think she can do it? Because as you say, Spain, they are an incredible side with perhaps the best player in the world as well right now. Yes, I think she, uh, they have the best player in the, in the world, maybe players. England has uh, Serena. I do believe Serena can make a difference. And this is this is what she's been fighting for all her life. It's, it's not just football. It's the emancipation of football. It's the fight that she had all her life for just being her and, and doing her passion, that's, and that's love in football. So this is more than just being in a final or winning. This is uh, about equal rights, improving the whole world of women's football. Uh, and Serena is one of the leading ladies in it. Well, in a moment, we'll find out the mood down under as we are just days away from kickoff in the biggest game these Lionesses will ever play. Now, let's speak to the luckiest Sky News employee, uh, our sports correspondent, Rob Harris, out there in Australia following the team. Good to talk to you again, Rob. I mean, clearly, this is someone with, with a degree of, of pedigree, a double European champion, World Cup finalist, three times FIFA Best Women's Coach, BBC Sports Personality Coach of the Year. She's even got an honorary CBE. I mean, how is this woman viewed by the footballing world? You get a sense within the FA, they can't believe how they've managed to land such a manager with, with the ability and the tactical flexibility as well you see in matches to be able to change things and such a cool head uh, she's not one of the most vocal uh, if you look say across the other uh, leading England manager course Gareth Southgate very often is the sort of figurehead of the nation type big speeches big statement you Serena Regan's very focused on the task in hand and very precise and just really determined in terms of the way she carries out things and that determination often means decisions that can be unpopular where players are cast by the wayside. Those players who are no longer of uh, complete value to the team, she actually has to take the decision to decide they no longer have a future, including the former captain, Steph Horton. But every time she has taken those big decisions, she seems to have been vindicated. I mean, you've obviously been speaking to her. You've obviously been speaking to people that, that know her and have, have worked for her, played for her as well. 
how is she viewed by by the players themselves? Because you know it's it's a difficult job, isn't it? You know, on the one hand, there there you have to be a ma- I was about to say a man manager. You have to be a, a woman manager, but also you have to have the tactical nous as well, and as we've already mentioned, be capable of making decisions for the benefit of the team that a lot of people will probably not like. Yeah, that's it. And you know, some people have thought maybe. The decisions are wrong to not give certain players a chance to prove their fitness and ensure they still stay in the team based on their past contribution. But perhaps that level of distance allows her to make those calls that might seem unpopular, but ultimately for the benefit of the team. You know, having this Lionesses team managed by Serena Vigman has created this really focused environment and you, you get that real sense of how she's drilled that into her players, that ability to turn around situations, to be able to produce the victories when it really does uh, matter. Just explain exactly why she was the, the, the ultimate target for the FA. You've been chatting to Kay Cossington about this, and, and clearly she had a pedigree, but, but not everyone who is a fantastic manager is necessarily a perfect fit for an international side. She was the manager who led uh, her homeland to the World Cup final in 2019. She also secured the Netherlands Euros glory in 2017. So if there's anyone to go for, it was Serena Wiegmann. She has a really clear playing style and identity, which matched and suited what we were trying to create for our England teams. She's a pleasure to work with. She's a hard worker. She's a winner, um, as we've all seen. Um, and, And she's just a great person to be around. And of course, on the men's side of things in terms of uh, the England teams, there's been a debate about should you go for an English manager or a foreign manager? England, of course, going with Fabio Capello and Sven Goran Eriksson. The FA clearly deciding actually that is not a necessity for you to be English. If you are the best person for the job, then they will turn to you and they will hire you. And Serena Vigan, well, particularly being bemused by the Australian rivalry going into the semi-final. But, you know, she was actually endearing in the sense of saying that she had to discover just why the rivalry meant so much from her players and talked around that and how she's sort of learning the sort of sense of being in the England job. And Kay Cossington, the uh, the technical chief, telling me that when Serena Vigan first took charge that they sort of talked through some of the English footballing history to give a sense of of all that. Well, since the day that she came in, she wanted to learn a lot about our culture and who we were and our identity as a game and our history as a women's football in, in our country. And she's been really committed to kind of upskilling her knowledge on that. Yeah, I mean, she's unaware of some of the rivalries and sometimes that's a good thing, right? You know, she just prepares teams and, and, and to, to play games and that's what her job is, one that she does incredibly well. And of course, now the challenge is, can the FA um, keep up <laughs> because uh, big jobs are available like the United States role of course previously the defending champions uh, they lost their ability to defend the title when they were knocked out of this tournament and uh, Serena Wiegmann has a contract until 2025 until the next Euros and the FA Chief Executive Mark Bullinger has been telling me there is effectively a desire to extend her until the 2027 World Cup We, we are very very happy with the job she's doing and we believe she's happy with the support she gets Do you think you're going to need to give her a hefty pay rise? (laughs) Well, we'll get into that discussion with her, Rob, but the reality is we're very, very happy with the job she's doing. We think she's an incredible talent and we'd love her to stay with us for a long time. Is this putting pressure on Gareth Southgate's team to reach a World Cup final? Well, it's a lovely uh, problem to have when both your teams are performing so well. I mean, really, we think it's a great period for English football. But of course, then there will also be a focus, particularly if things go well for England in Sunday's final, about why... She's the England manager who wins trophies, but has paid much less than Gareth Southgate. Look, Rob, let's turn our attention to the final. A big, big game against a very, very decent side with what I would say is probably the best player in the world in the women's game. Can they do it? I mean, it will be a tough test for England. They are facing a country on the rise. Spain had never qualified for a Women's World Cup before 2015. It's only their third shot at the World Cup. Now they're in the final. And that is a reflection of increased investment, particularly by clubs in Spain, by Barcelona, by Real Madrid. And it shows actually how things were held back in Spain. But now they are a threat and a team to be uh, reckoned with, as England saw at the Euros last year. The fact they came so close to the quarterfinal exit. But... For England, this is the culmination of the journey of so much investment in women's football. And of course, England still playing catch up after banning women's football for 50 years from the 1920s. So for the FA, this is the moment that they've been aiming for to try to land the World Cup. 
I can't believe it, Rob. You've actually got it. You've got me to do it. A Scotsman is going to, by his own volition, raise 1966. Because, of course, the last time, as you just alluded to, the last time that England won this thing, women were banned from playing it. I mean, just just put into context this this success. Even if you don't win, even if you guys don't finally don't end up lifting the World Cup, I mean, for for this women's side to have done what they have done under this manager is a remarkable achievement, and presumably will have a lasting effect on football in general in this country. Yeah, Scotland perhaps would be hoping for a fixture against the Lionesses straight after the uh, World Cup final at some point so they could replicate the aftermath of 66 and declare themselves unofficial world champions. You got there before me, Rob. You know so exactly where I was going. But yeah, it's a, it, but it still is. It, it will be a remarkable achievement no matter what happens on the day. Yes, the fact they have reached a World Cup final, it's not happened since the men in 66 and reaching it is something to be celebrated. It is a, it's a sign of progress and... You do go get a sense that actually now they've got this far, they do want to go on and win it because it, it is something expected of this uh, team given uh, the rise that they've been on. But it certainly will be another springboard just reaching the final for further growth of the women's game, increased television audiences, more attention on the team and more of the Lionesses becoming household names, which then helps them get things like the commercial deals, which actually helps them to sustain their own careers too. Um, Rob, I'm just having a quick look round the studio to make sure there aren't any Scottish people here. No, there aren't any. Good luck at the weekend, OK? <laughs> Don't tell anyone I said that. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Great to join you from the roads of New South Wales. And that's your lot for today, but the final words won't be me singing It's Coming Home. Instead, once again, here's Serena's former teammate, Jeanette von der Lange. I wish you all the best. I hope England uh, will win because Spain uh, eliminated us. So uh, let's go, England.